Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 21 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy for small business owners that are confused and unsettled by digital. So version two of Irwin Animal Clinic in Osceola, Georgia, which was actually example two, if you uh, recall. So this is the homepage of the working demo that I've set up. So when you go to jasonobsllc.com forward slash example dash 21, that's the number two one, then scroll down, you'll see a big green button and it'll take you to the working demo. So what's the point? Well, the point of documenting your digital marketing strategy as a small business owner is that an ounce of strategic planning saves a pound of your resources. How I organize a digital marketing strategy as of 1228 of 2018, <laughs> when I jumped ahead there. However, the point is that I walk through six different steps each time that I put together or document, organize a digital marketing strategy. Research, foundation, audience, prospects, customers, and campaigns. So the first step is we start with research. The idea is to put together what we call a SWOT chart, which is strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats for this specific brand. And to establish a clear goal for the strategy and as part of that strategic aim. And number three is the customer point of view, having a clear understanding of who they are, what matters to them, what they're feeling, what they're seeing, doing, etc. And focusing on a singular point of view. And from there, it's a pressing problem. Identifying, you know, what's the what are the most pressing problems that you can actually solve for them profitably. So the SWOT chart, the one of the first things that I do, and obviously this is an unresearched example, right? Just a thought exercise. But I want to try and pass along, kind of, you know, here's the process that you know, I've been putting together over the past twelve years, basically, right? And I start by Googling it. So I, do they have a website? No, that's what we call digital sharecropping because they're basically running their digital presence through their Facebook page, which means that Facebook is in between them and communications with their customers and audience members, et cetera, right? There's not a direct relationship. So here's some some of the questions possible, there could be more, there could be less. It always, it's individual to the unique context, right? And it, the idea is to not just have a bunch of questions that kind of ram down someone's throat, is to have a conversation and ask, I like to understand why, as often as I can, if I can understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, then it's going to make it so much easier to help you document your digital marketing strategy and have something that just feels comfortable and natural to you as far as managing it moving forward, right? So a couple of reports possible, but it's all putting together the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threads. And the goal is to cease the digital sharecropping and begin organizing their own direct audience of pet people right? People that have pets, <laughs> not that they're enslaving people or anything. All right. So how will they build that audience that's relevant is by creating their own media. So rather than being an advertiser and getting access to other people's audiences, they're going to build their own audience with their own media. And the customer point of view I'd focus on is people with animals living within 30 miles of the brick and mortar clinic. Because keep in mind, it's a brick and mortar clinic. They've been around for long, long, long time. I've been a customer. I'm, my mom's been a customer of theirs for many, many, many years. So how do they get to know people that pay attention to them, right? So these could be audience members and prospects and customers and longtime customers and brand ambassadors, etc. A two-way digital conversation is how I recommend doing it. So you document that conversation on the Drift timeline for each of the different people. And I use Drift.com in order to handle the live chat and the email component. So because those two core portions are already there, I just send everything else from when they're in WooCommerce, all the different actions they might take, as well as other places, you know, Facebook ads, whatever. It, and it puts all that information 
on one timeline so that when I'm looking at one individual person, it's still allowing me to this point, and I'm still one person, but it's still allowing me to scale the unscalable as far as I shouldn't be able to provide as much one-on-one direct value that I do, it's, but it's because of the technology and you know the internet and so forth, and just you know, loads of experience, right? So the pressing problem is, whoops, it's actually the pet, quality pet care. And how can they relieve pressure from local people is by allowing them to use their smartphones in order to engage with the Irwin Animal Clinic as well as their team. So, you know, especially with emergency stuff these days, there's so many different ways that you can literally get in touch with someone instantaneously if you want to, rather than calling up and getting the emergency number and calling in, you could just kind of, and especially when it's a time that you're all stressed out and, you know, it's just... So the digital foundation is the second step. You start with your website. I start with a WordPress website. I call it a digital office just to kind of help people understand. But end of the day, it's a website. And I use WordPress. I use Genesis Framework and a Genesis Child Theme, specifically Essence Pro. And the idea, though, is you're creating a professional place for your customers to interact with your brand. So I like to start with a homepage. Just keep it simple when you're putting together your website. It doesn't have to be overwhelming, even though it typically is for people that as they first get started with their website and it's their business website and now they have a store with it and that's all stressful and so forth. You don't need to freak out because start with your homepage. Make sure that you have a very specific and helpful message on your homepage. Make sure that all the pages that are linked to from your homepage to fulfill that message, they're all populated. From there, you're good to go. Like I said, you, Essence Pro, if you never bought anything from Studio Press, it's 130 bucks. And here's the example. This is using Essence Pro and very lightly edited, if at all, really. It's more of just a stock. And when you scroll down, you can see that they can log in and register right there on the homepage. And if they do log in, that area will be replaced with their account with Irwin Animal Clinic, which is just so much more convenient for people, especially for me as a user, like I'd love for them to do this. So the digital store is just, we want to give them friction free access, the product catalog. So you want to put together the product catalog, but once again, you start with the basics and you grow from there and understand you want to give people access to what they want to purchase. And so allowing people to order their pet food and supplies, et cetera, through Irwin Animal Clinic's brand is something that the online store makes very easy. And by using Liquid Web's managed WooCommerce hosting to do this, it includes the Jilt cart abandonment process. So when people come in and they put something into their cart and then life intervenes, Jilt will at 30 minutes of the cart inactivity, they'll declare it abandoned and then start a process to recapture as much as possible but you definitely want to do it because it's better than nothing right and so here's an example and i put together some and those are my pets uh well the middle one is my mom's uh pet actually my aunt's now and then that's lizzie on the right and that's my cat advisor darcy has a very tiny baby on the left so and when you put you know, there's a cart that you can to go and you can check out and etc. So the idea is you have your home page, which is your basic website, kind of the office area, and then you have your store, and then you also have your media archive. Because once again, you have that direct relationship you're building with customers as opposed to renting access to other people's, whether it's the billboard company or what, it, you know, it's just, you're still renting access to other people's audience. And in this instance, you're building your direct. So you want to have that archive, the home of it on land you own, which is your website. And that's going to be comprised of video, audio, and written images, ideally, because you want to take the burden off of the the customer or the end user, that person that's going to actually watch your media or listen to it or read it or whatever. It's not hard if you start with video to produce all three from that same thing. It's the same story 
so to speak, but you're just putting it into each of the three different formats. And so by doing it all three, then whatever way that we want to, you know, someone wants to consume it, it's available. And that's a good thing because that gives you a, a higher percentage of your potential audience, be, you know, remains available because of that. So here is an example of the blog or media page. And there's, a, I put a couple of dummy posts just to kind of show, but it's really a case where you put everything there and here's the actual blog, you know, so you just kind of show you. All right, so the audience is the third step. And the idea is to make sure that you have a plan in place to grow your own audience. So some things that I've learned to kind of get started is number one, you got to start first and foremost. And along with that understanding, Take a deep breath and be yourself. I would start by documenting, just focusing on documenting the Irwin Animal Clinic story. So now Irwin Animal Clinic is going to view themselves as their own media company. So they have a media budget, they have a media team, and they have you know, their own expectations and so forth. But commit to a weekly list of media deliverables. That's kind of the idea behind, okay, I'm committing to being my own media company. That's where the rubber hits the road, if you will. And the second guiding principle, if you will, that I've learned over the years is focus on your customer, period, full stop. So document answers to questions their customers are already asking the staff day in and day out. Start there. That's going to take up plenty of time. And then from there, you can tell stories about the customers and about the team and about the animals that you see and tell their story. I mean, it's just there is just limitless opportunities for you to create media that wins loads of additional customers potentially, but also just makes it so easy to introduce your brand to people across the world because of the internet, right? And then you have all three versions, you know, that, as I mentioned, and I kind of explained previously, and then consistent and committed action. You, you need the repetition. You have to create something and then you have to share it with the world. If, if you put it on a shelf, it doesn't matter how many videos you create, you don't learn until the market's actually consuming it and you're getting real time feedback from them. So the media creation process, it, we focus on all three forms, right? And the idea is like I was saying before, video, audio, and written by doing the video. Like with me, I'll put together a slide deck and that I'll use that to record the video right and then i'll extract the audio from that file and i get it written i'll put it together or i could have it transcribed and then do some light editing or there's even editing services i could use it just really depends on how i want to approach it in the end of the day it's all about attention so i talk to one person each time with each piece of media don't try and be in the middle try and be on the fringes so to speak like let you know how successful it is but that's what I'm focusing on and signs are good thus far. We get better with experience and repetition, make and share your video every time. You have to create those stories, create the media messages and then share it. And you know, as I was saying, I put the slides, you can see all the different examples that I have and just, I, that's how I plan other videos as well. It's just simpler. And here are, I have Soapbox by Wistia, the pro version. So I use it, it's a Chrome, Google Chrome extension that I use as far as like I'm using now to record this video. And you can see there all the different ones. And it, so the idea is though, you wanna document your creation process and then iterate it over time. And it's an ongoing thing. So plan a general one, and I know it sounds super simplistic, but you have to start somewhere. And the, the idea is you need a process that literally puts out something. You can you know manu manipulate everything as far as <laughs> to make sure that you get what you want or better over time, but you have to actually complete the process before you're going to get any value, right? It's just like thinking about doing push-ups versus doing push-ups. You get a value from it by doing them, you don't if you just think about it. And so plan the video, shoot the video, edit the video, publish the video. I consider that to the website of the brand and then distributing the video is sending it to all the other places that that brand basically using to get attention of strangers and then promote the video is there's going to be some pay there's going to be some free it's just any number of options it just once again is specific to the specific strategy 
And the media distribution, you want to give the people what they want, where they want it, how they want it, and every time they want it. And it's a high bar, but that's the goal. So that will determine which of the different social media sites and which paid advertising platforms and et cetera that you're going to use. It's going to be you know, where are your actual people. And once you get the attention of your actual people or who could potentially be, you have to qualify them as or disqualify them, right? As far as are they or are they not a prospect and for your business for you to buy from your brand basically and so the way that i break that up is digital offer and the customer attention life cycle so the digital offer is as opposed to the industrialized you know four piece of marketing i use solution access value and education i initially heard it from greg ciotti he was at helpscout.net he may still be there i'm not actually i don't think he is but i think he moved on to something else however the solution example for Irwin Animal Clinic is digitally efficient brick and mortar experience. They don't have the smartphone incorporated because they don't have their own website yet. So that would be the place to start. And I would start with the store build out so that people could start buying stuff. And so they, they, they could see like, what do people want to buy from them? How do people want to interact? And then uh, give them what they want is the idea. But you have to start that interaction and let that interaction play out. and iterate based off of the lessons from the interaction. So the access is the homepage. So if you go look at the working demo, you'll see that everything is built around initially, let's get all the interactions, let's provide as much value as possible from the website homepage for people as possible, and then go from there. The minimum number of wasted minutes of the animal caregiver's time, that's the value, right? Because digital is about time for people these days it still is so the reason that uber did so well was they were saving people time because i'm one of their customers i mean that's what it boils down to my value would be can i order stuff can i book a time and so forth from their website and currently no because they don't have a website so paint the picture for animal owners of how much the clinic staff adores animals because they do i mean I've, I've seen it repeatedly every time i take any of my or my mom's animals up there so that's the messaging that i would be putting out as far as to get attention if it was paid ads if it was so forth same thing and the customer life cycle so people start as a stranger they go to audience member qualified prospect customer is how I laid it out is for, again, unresearched example, it's gonna be specific to the, the individual brand. So the stranger is they don't know Irwin Animal Clinic and Irwin Animal Clinic is clueless about them. The audience member, Irwin Animal Clinic makes media for a reason, it's that direct relationship. And the qualify the prospects, make them a contextual offer, you've qualified them and as you've talked or interacted with them, you've put all that information on the a customer timeline in drift.com for that person. And the idea behind that is to allow us to make a contextual offer for you. That way it's not about trying to talk anybody into anything, it's just giving them an opportunity to buy something that they want to buy. So, and, you know, cater to customers, obviously from there. So the customers, I start with the customer conversation and it's a two-way conversation between equally respected parties. Relate to people, be helpful, segment the customer point of views, qualify the prospects and that all of that, obviously to make contextual offers and to make people happy. If they're happy, if customers are happy, they stay, they tell people there's good stuff that happens from that. If customers are pissed off or blah about it, then that doesn't help. So the customer conversation, live chat, email, video, phone, I'd start with live chat during lobby hours and supplement it with email. And in addition to what they already do, which is people coming in and just, at that front counter, there's so much opportunity to really push the digital version with people and help people get up and running with it. And there's just so much opportunity there because people are going to really appreciate anything that helps them save time. And they already get such amazingly you know, friendly and loving uh, animal care. So the customer feedback loop. Okay. So I use gatherup.com. The way that that works is somebody buys. So the customer feedback loop for Irwin Animal Clinic, I go up there and I get my dogs, uh, you know, shots or whatever. 
let's say I get the shots, right? And so once that is done, they put my email address into gatherup.com and it sends me an email saying one to 10, how likely are you to share or one animal clinic with other people? And all I do is click on one through 10. If I click one to eight, it's going to basically put me into what I call a customer service queue. If it's nine and 10, then it's going to thank me and it's going to invite me to share it publicly. And it's going to give me a bunch of different links typically to Yelp and Facebook and let me choose where do I want to share it. So number six is the campaigns. And there's three types of campaigns. There's the Campaigns focused on getting attention, campaigns focused on keeping attention, and then obviously administrative, right? So in administrative is just managing your brand's relationship with the, every other part of the internet. So an example of the get attention campaign would be telling the, you have that origin story video and you start running ads and so forth and to get that origin story in front of people that maybe didn't know about you or had forgotten, so to speak. And the keep attention, I'd start with email typically. I mean, if they don't have an email, if they don't have a website, you start there, right? And then the very second step is let's get an email set up because that's part of what a website's value is, right? You want that one-to-one -one direct communication. And these days it plays out through our smartphone, largely through email, but also you know, text and so forth. So the idea is to make it easy for customers to carry on their own conversation with Irwin Animal Clinic and just get the information from Irwin Animal Clinic when they want it, how they want it. The local citations is a, the first example of an administrative campaign. So the way it works is brightlocal.com has a, what they call a local citation builder service. They've been iterating and improving this for years. And for two to five bucks a profile, each brand, so jasonomsllc.com being one, I can put up all my information into brightlocal.com, all my images, my logo, as well as videos and links and a short description and a long description in my official business name and business address and business phone number and you know, so forth, right? And by I put it all in one place and then they go make sure that it's set everywhere that I tell them to. And they're able to tell me, hey, here's here's what is the current state of this, your profile on this individual site and if it needs to be fixed and you know, so forth. All right, so what's next is example 22. That's Monday, January 7th. And it's going to be a second version. It's going to be for my products for small business owners that are unsettled and confused by digital. And it's the second version of those. It's They're called Get Online and Get Organized. So pretty excited that it's going to be a big step forward and kind of showing all the pieces and really having everything documented. If you have questions, as always, my email my smartphone, if you can give me a call, but leave a message. If I don't know your number, I'm not gonna answer, but I will get back with you as soon as possible. If you wanna text, feel free, just kind of give me some idea who you are. Otherwise, have a great one. Hopefully your new year's rocking so far.